Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stay at home lecture. I am Tim Nutt. I am the director of the, His the UAMS Historical Research Center, which is the archives division of the UAMS library. We are located in the library um, in the Education 2 building on campus. And um, just um, we're on the fifth floor and would um, looking forward to um, uh, this beginning a new year um, of the stay at home lectures. As you uh, know by now, we we switch the time on these from at night from seven to eight on the first Thursday to noon to one. Uh, we're still on the first Thursday of every month. And um, so hopefully this will be a little bit more convenient for people and um, maybe we'll get a little bit uh, bigger audience for this. Um, as you, if, you, if you've been to these before, the Stay at Home Lecture is um, sponsored by um, the Society for the History of Medicine and the Health Professions, which is the Friends Organization for the UAMS Historical Research Center. And the Society does a number of things to help uh, the Historical Research Center. In addition to programming like this, they also sponsor book signings and other events. We have an annual dinner, uh, which has been, uh, which we hope to restart this year. It's been, uh, we haven't been able to have it for uh, because of COVID in the last few years, but we're hoping to start that back up this year. And uh, also the Society provides some financial uh, support in the form of purchasing materials for our collections, books and archival materials and things like that. Uh, we'd love to have you as a member of the society. The dues are, are inexpensive, $5 for students. Uh, and you can be a student anywhere in the United States or in the world for that matter, and $15 for individuals. Um, the URL for the society page is up on your screen. Um, but you can also bypass that and just go to paypal.me slash shmhp if you want to just pay the dues directly from there. Um, the information for the Historical Research Center, the contact information is up on your screen as well. And uh, hopefully, um, if you have any questions, please contact us. And if you have any questions about the society, please uh, contact us as well uh, for that. Um, a few housekeeping notes. Um, we, um, uh, if you have a questions, you can go ahead and just type it into the chat feature of Zoom. Um, I'll be looking at those and um, I might uh, incorporate those into my talk depending on the question, but uh, you don't have to wait until the end to to uh, to write your question. You can go ahead and type that in the chat if you want. Um, as I mentioned, these are happening on the first Thursday of every month from noon to one. And uh, next month, uh, we are going to, I'll be giving the presentation again uh, next month. It's going to be a brief history of the Arkansas Medical, Dental, and Pharmaceutical Association, which is the, which is an organization that was founded uh, for the Black uh, health sciences community. Um, they were, um, when the Arkansas Medical Society was established in 1875, uh, African Americans were not admitted. And so uh, the Black health community uh, created, organized their own organization and it's still going strong today. So I will be talking about that on February 1st uh, uh, next month. And um, today I'm particularly excited about presenting uh, the history of the College of Physicians and Surgeons in Little Rock. And it's a it, it was only in existence for a brief uh, period of time, um, it, um, but it had a lasting impression and it actually, uh, improved, if you can believe that it improved the, uh, the, the medical school, the UAMS, uh, that we see now was influenced and, and, um, influenced for the better by the College of the Physicians and Surgeons. So let's delve into that a little bit. Uh, again, if you have any questions, just go ahead and you can just pop those in to the uh, chat. And uh, hopefully I will be able to uh, to incorporate those if need be. And I'll certainly answer those at the end of the, end of the session. Um, 
and I'm hoping I'm using double screens, which I usually don't use. So I'm hoping that uh, you're you're seeing the correct screen and not the work screen. Um, but if I if you are seeing the work screen, if somebody will type that in the chat, I'll switch them. Um, anyway, let's get started. So on your screen right now is a uh, a photo, uh, a drawing of the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And you'll see the main building right uh, in front with the two towers. You'll see the dormitory uh, in the back and then over to the left, uh, what looks like a house. Um, and it was a house actually. Um, okay, so current slide and the next slide on our screen. So let me switch that. Uh, I can figure out how to do that. Is that better? Okay. Uh, so on your screen, as I mentioned, you'll see the the rendering of uh, the um, the main building and the campus of the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Before we get into that, we let's talk a little bit about the history of the medical uh, education in Arkansas and Little Rock. So as you probably all know by now, uh, University of Arkansas, the medical school, what we know now as UAMS, was founded in 1879. Uh, by the eight founders, and you see those on the uh, those men on the screen. Um, it was part of it was it had the it used the name of the University of Arkansas, Arkansas Industrial University at that time, um, but it was not affiliated with the university. It was not a part of the university. The university just allowed them to use their name uh, in the school. Uh, that school, uh, it was a uh, for-profit school, proprietary school, and so the founders of the U of A Medical School, they received all any profits that came from the the uh, tuition uh, and any other profits uh, that were made from the from the school. So, uh, so that was established in 1879, and and so anyone in Arkansas. Uh, who wanted to get who, who wanted to become a doctor and wanted to stay in Arkansas would end up at the uh, medical school in Little Rock. And it wasn't until the early part of the 20th century that the medical school, the U of A medical school, had any competition. So there's a little bit of of um, um, why this came, why the other medical school came into an existence, came into existence. And it goes back to the founders of the of the medical school in 1879. The eight men, uh, Dr. Bentley, Jennings, Hooper, McGowan, Bryce Ocker, uh, Dibral, Southall, and Watkins, they had become established in the Little Rock community. That uh, you know, they were young, youngish. Uh, when they founded the medical school, but by the time the 1900s rolled around, uh, about 30 years later, or 20 years later, excuse me, uh, they were pretty much ensconced in the institution, the, the medical school institution. And so you had these new doctors coming in to Little Rock. They had not necessarily gone or attended the U of A medical school. So they had, there were uh, many doctors in Little Rock that did not have any affiliation with the Arkansas Industrial University Medical School. And the medical school was pretty much a self, it was isolated upon it in itself. Uh, so any promotions uh, that happened in the school came from within. They were very reluctant to let any of the newer doctors into onto the faculty at the medical school. So that caused frustrations with the newer doctors in Little Rock. The, uh, going on simultaneously with that, the newer doctors had uh, uh, joined the Arkansas Medical Society, which had been founded in 1875, um, pretty much by the same men that you see on your screen now. And so the newer doctors had pretty much taken over the Arkansas Medical Society. They were in, they were the in the in the position, the leadership positions of the Arkansas Medical Society. So they had that uh, 
uh, recognition uh, from being with the medical society, but they also wanted recognition for uh, the prestige that came along, that came with being on the faculty of a medical school, and they could not break in to the ranks of the U of A medical school. So that was causing conflict between the, the older generation, the founders of the UA Medical School, and the newer generation, the newer doctors that were coming in and, and building up practices in Little Rock and running the medical society. So that's, that's your stage uh, for what's going on in the early 1900s, and that's what's prompting this new school. So the newer generation... Um, the newer generation said, well, how can we get around this? How can we do this? And so their solution was, well, we'll just create our, create our own proprietary medical school. So in 1906, that's what they did. And they created the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And just to give you an idea, uh, the map on your screen, uh, the circle is, is where the grounds uh, were. Uh, for the College of Physicians and Surgeons. If you're heading out with Harp, you go over the viaduct and you sort of make the curve and you're going up the hill. Uh, and you have the Dillard's headquarters uh, on your right there. Right before you get to that Dillard's headquarters, just to the east of that, right on the river, that's where the school was. At that time, uh, that was called, it was called Lincoln Avenue uh, in honor of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, that strip of, of land used to have uh, Victorian houses. Um, there's one still there, the 1836, um, uh, the uh, Wade McDonald Newton house is still there. But that also used to be called uh, uh, Robbers Row, Reconstruction Row, because a lot of the uh, men who moved into Little Rock after the Civil War built houses there. Uh, and so they called them, that was Reconstruction Row up there. So that's where the grounds were. And um, so 1906, uh, Dr. Runyon um, uh, um, and others, the newer doctors in town, they decided they were going to incorporate uh, this new medical school called the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And uh, just as a side note here, in the when you're reading, you'll also come across another co college of physicians and surgeons, which was the name of another medical group uh, in the 1870s that was a, co a competitor to the Arkansas Medical Society. And they had uh, differences between the two. Uh, so it's it gets kind of confusing when you have these two names that are the same. Um, and the same people involved uh, pretty much in all the uh, uh, all these activities. But so the building there, the building was already there when they founded the College of Physicians and Surgeons. It had been built in 1882 um, as part of Little Rock University, which was an educational institution in Little Rock in the 1880s. Uh, it went defunct. Uh, was not in existence for very long, but they did, they was, they were able to build this uh, magnificent building with the Twin Towers right on the banks of the Arkansas River. So when Little Rock University failed, the doctors associated with the College of Physicians and Surgeons um, uh, saw this building and uh, and decided to get this building and use it for the college. This is a photograph from 1890. The university was in the 1880s, early 1890s. After it went defunct for a brief time, you had uh, A.S. Maddox, uh, Presbyterian minister, who uh, ran the Union Female College in Mississippi and he stopped in Little Rock in the mid 1890s, late 1890s, uh, on his way to Memphis. And uh, because of Mississippi having a yellow fever outbreak at the time, he decided to move his uh, female seminary to Little Rock. And so he actually took over the Little Rock University building uh, after the university, Little Rock University, went defunct. 
So he was in the building from about 1898 until 1906. Um, he made no changes to the building. It was just another educational institution. After he decided to sell, Meek or Maddox, excuse me, Maddox decided to sell the building to um, Dr. Joseph Phineas Runyon and Dr. Charles Chanel, uh, who became founders of the College of uh, Physicians and Surgeons. And so they had the infrastructure there to create uh, this new medical school. So in 1906, in the beginnings of early months of 1906, they start advertising. Um, and the first session of the College of Physicians of Surgeons begins in October of 1906. They had 100 students. And uh, uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the school, um, they, to get more revenue, they also decided they were going to create a college of, a school of nursing within the College of Physicians and Surgeons, hoping that would bring in also more money. Because remember, this was a proprietary school. And so the proprietors, Runyon and Chanel, uh, wanted not only to make a profit, they also wanted to provide medical education, of course, but it was a profit, for profit uh, entity. So the College of Nursing was established uh, in the early stages of 1906. It was not, did not begin at the session, but later on in 1906, early 1907, they started the College of, or the School of Nursing. The tuition was about uh, $60 a, a year. Uh, for the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And you had a $5 matriculation fee. And then when you graduated for your at the end of your four years, you had to pay a $25 uh, fee. Um, but anyway, so in October of 1906, it starts with 100 students. And um, in 1906, they uh, graduate... Um, um, uh, 11 people, 11 men uh, to become doctors. The Arkansas Medical Society, of course, is ecstatic about this because most of the people who are involved in the College of Physicians and Surgeons are in the leadership position of the Arkansas Medical Society, so it gets a lot of publicity. The folks at the U of A Medical School was not happy. They were not happy with the College of Physicians and Surgeons, as you can imagine. So we have the, it was touted new medical college plans. It talks about the people who were on faculty, uh, it talks about the incorporators. And you had about, there were about 15, 15 to 20 incorporators of the College of Physicians and Surgeons. So all those people, they were all mostly on the faculty. They had their own private practices as well. Uh, so they did not receive any sort of salary from the college. They, at the end, they got the profits or they divided the profits among themselves at the end. And it was just like a regular medical school. You had the anatomy classes, you had uh, 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 dissection, you had all these uh, 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 classes that the students went to, all the lectures. And just like the U of A medical school, which was also proprietary, the students would buy tickets uh, for their the lectures they wanted to go to and which ones they had to attend and which ones that they, you know, wanted to use in whatever practice and field that they wanted to go into. So curricula, curriculum wise, it was pretty much identical to the U of A medical school. So as I mentioned, 1907, April of 1907, they graduate 11 members of the graduate of the College of the Physicians and Surgeons. And you see at the picture on your screen, um, the graduates mixed in with the faculty and staff of the College of Physicians and Surgeons. The faculty, there were about 30 faculty members. Um, and not all of those were incorporators of the thing, but they did have other people come in to teach. Uh, and U of A Medical School had about the same number, maybe a few, uh, 
uh, fewer, maybe about 25 uh, people on faculty. So the picture on your screen now, you see the, the, the graduates, but you also see the faculty members, the, the bald headed guy sitting right next to the man in the hat uh, on the front row, that is uh, Runyon, who is the Dean of uh, the school. One of the advantages of the College of Physicians and Surgeons was that they actually had a hospital hospital on the campus of the school, which the University of Arkansas Medical School did not. They So the College of Physicians and Surgeons, they admitted people to the hospital, and so they were um, uh, they were able to deal with patients in a clinical setting on the grounds of the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And we do have, we had a comment, there was also a School of Pharmacy. Yes, the School of Pharmacy did come a little bit later uh, uh, in the, at the College of Physicians and Surgeons. The U of A, they did not have their own hospital. They, for clinical practice, they were using the city hospital Little Rock City Hospital, which at that time was was the Logan Roots Hospital. It was located next door to the school. So on the picture on your screen now, you see the Logan Roots Hospital on the left. And then on the right, that's the medical school right there. And so for any clinical work, the, medic, the U of A medical students would use the Logan Roots Hospital. Logan Roots Hospital had rooms for about 30 people, had about 30 rooms, 30 beds, while the College of Physicians and Surgeons had quite a few more with around 100 beds. So you can see the differences in the clinical uh, facilities of this. Now, the U of A also made use of the Isaac Folsom Clinic, which um, was a free clinic uh, for the poor and indigent people uh, of Little Rock. It had been endowed by Isaac Folsom, a doctor from Lone Oak. When he died uh, in the 1890s, he left $20,000 um, for uh, to U of A um, to build this free clinic. And so when this picture on your screen, the building in the back, you see, you see the school in the front and then in the back of, you'll see the Isaac Folsom Clinic, which was like a, it was a three-story building on the back. Um, and then you see the Logan Roots Hospital on the left uh, of this, in this picture as well. So U of A was, was, students were using the Logan Roots Hospital. They were using the Isaac Folsom Clinic as their clinical um, training. Uh, but there was, you know, there was, it did not have the same, uh, they almost didn't have the same uh, opportunities as the folks in the College of Physicians and Surgeons um, because the, the College of Physicians and Surgeons had the hospital on the grounds. So the College of Physicians and Surgeons, they move along 1907, they have 11 graduates, they have another school, another class come in, fall of 1907, they graduate in 1908, on and on and on. When we get to around 1910, 1909, 1910, both schools, the medical school, UA, UA Medical School and College of Physicians and Surgeons, the curriculum is lacking. And they come to realize that the curriculum is lacking because in 1910, when the state uh, uh, passes the law, uh, the law saying that doctors have to pass this test to be registered as a doctor, College of Physicians and Surgeons, uh, most of their graduates fail. Uh, U of A, pretty much the same boat, although their, their percentage is a little bit higher of, of passing. And so they're realizing their curriculum is not that great. Um, U of A did not pour a whole lot of money into their medical facilities. So by the time 1910 comes along, the, the building that you see on your screen, it started, 
starting to deteriorate. They had moved in that building in 1890. Uh, they had not really kept up with the maintenance of the building. Uh, the curriculum was bad. And so they were not, U of A Medical School was not in a good situation. Neither was the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Now, the difference, one of the differences with the College of Physicians and Surgeons is they would make uh, uh, improvements to the facilities and to the infrastructure at the College of Physicians and Surgeons, whereas UA Medical School did not. So the Medical Society sees this, and they also begin to realize that Little Rock, uh, Little Rock with a population of about 45,000 people, cannot support two what they want to be first class uh, medical schools. You know, you can take that into account with all of Arkansas, all of our, you know, people coming from all over Arkansas to go to these medical schools. And there's just not enough support, not enough um, uh, financial, uh, financial um, stability to support both of these medical schools. So the Arkansas Medical Society starts looking into the possibility of combining the two schools. Dr. Frank Young, he was chair of the committee to investigate the two schools merging uh, and becoming one. There was a lot of discussion back and forth. It's like anything involving the medical education history of Arkansas. It's very convoluted, very um, back and forth. Um, but the Arkansas Medical Association eventually agrees. Now, remember that the Medical Society is run, the leadership is the College of Physicians and Surgeons, uh, the faculty of the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And so for them, you know, I think it probably looked to them it might be might be a defeat to admit that they could not keep go could, could not go on with this medical school and that the two needed to combine. U of A, they didn't want to combine either. Uh, you know, they didn't want this upstart uh, medical school coming in and um, out, outshining them, which in some ways they were. Um, but they the the committee of the Arkansas Medical Society, they come to the realization that this is probably the best thing to do. Now, what finally brings this to a head, though, and, and sort of cements the fact that the two schools need to merge, is the Flexner Report in 1910. Abraham Flexner had been commissioned by the Carnegie Foundation to go around and uh, evaluate the uh, uh, conditions of medical education in the UA, in the U.S. and Canada. So he visits every state, every medical school. He comes to Little Rock. He visits Little Rock in November of 1909. The report's issued in 1910. And he found very big deficiencies in um, uh, both medical schools. So this is what he has to say about uh, the medical department of the University of Arkansas. The entrance requirements were nominal, which could be, that was the same for College of Physicians and Surgeons. In 1909, they had 179 students in the college, in the school. 80, about 81% of them were from Arkansas. You had a teaching staff of 35, 18 being professors. So resources available for maintenance, fees, because remember it's a proprietary school, the fees from that, from the students, a little over $14,000. And remember, they did not do a whole lot of pouring back that money into the school. The faculty at U of A pretty much regularly voted to give themselves a raise or a bonus every year. So one year, uh, when they had two, around 200 students, each faculty member got about a $900 uh, bonus. The College of Physicians and Surgeons, all their fees went back into the maintenance of the building. 
So Flexner continued laboratory facilities for U of A. After an existence of 30 years without any laboratory facilities except a dissecting room and a laboratory for inorganic chemistry, a frame building has recently been supplied with meager equipment for the teaching of pathology and bacteriology. Um, there was no museum, no books, no charts, no models, or anything was provided in the laboratory. Clinical facilities, hardly more than nominal. School adjoins the city hospital with capacity of 30 beds. From this hospital, patients are brought into the amphitheater of the school building. There are no ward visits. So when U of A saw that College of Physicians and Surgeons were putting their money back into the maintenance of the building, they decided they needed to do that as well. And so they equipped the amphitheater in this building where they would bring in people, uh, patients uh, for, for, uh, uh, for clinical. Um, so then he goes on to, so he's not very um, uh, complimentary of the UA Medical School. College of Physicians and Surgeon, he goes on. In 1909, they had a, 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 a attendance of 81, 81 students. About 60% were from Arkansas. So you had a bigger number from out of state uh, coming to the College of Physicians and Surgeons. You had 25 professors on staff. Their fees from the school, from the students, around $6,400. So quite a bit lower um, than um, U of A. Their laboratory facilities, separate recently organized and very disorderly laboratories for pathology, bacteriology, and chemistry with which pharmacy work are all the charge of a single teacher. There's also the pathologist to the county hospital. Um, the usual wretched dissect dissecting room is also provided. None of the necessary illustrative paraphernalia are at hand in the shape of books, charts, museums, et cetera. For clinical facilities, the faculty of the school controls an adjoining hospital from which patients are brought into the amphitheater for demonstration or operation. At operations, it is claimed that the students assist. No ward rounds are made. Occasional clinics are also held at, the two, di at two distant hospitals the Pulaski County Hospital, which was in the southwest part of the city, and the state penitentiary. Uh, obstetrical and acute medical cases are rare. Uh, there is no adequate dispensary equipment. Um, so here is, so he's evaluated both of the schools, and this is his uh, overall uh, recommendation. Both the Arkansas schools are local institutions in a state that has at this day three times as many doctors as it needs. So the number of physicians in Arkansas with a population of 1.4 million uh, in 1909, 1910, there were over 2,500 doctors uh, in the state, which was a ratio of one to 582. Um, neither institution has a single redeeming feature. It is incredible that the state university should permit its name to shelter one of them. The general education interest of the state required that the state university now inconveniently located at Fayetteville should be moved to Little Rock. Once there, it could probably get possession of both schools and organize something better than either, which it could prove as its resources increase with the general prosperity of the state. So Flexner recommended that the two schools merge. He also recommended the university move to Little Rock, which was not going to happen. And, um, so serious talk began about merging the two schools. They actually, the, the Arkansas State Medical Society uh, convened, the, that merger committee convened with the faculty and leaders of the both schools. They started talking with uh, state uh, uh, legislatures, legislators um, about what would happen, what, it would, what would happen if the schools merged and so some recommend recommendations came out of that. One, if the two schools merged, that it would become an official department, uh, official unit of the University of Arkansas. It wouldn't just be using the name of the University of Arkansas, but it would be a part, an official 
department, official college of the University of Arkansas. That was one. Two, that they, both schools, would turn over all their facilities, all the equipment to the state. So these two proprietary schools would give up all the investment that they had put in to the schools in exchange for becoming part of the university and receiving state money. Um, so the state legislators, they were interested in this. The president of the university at that time, uh, he was very interested in it because he was always interested in uh, expanding the university. And this would be an expansion into um, um, Little Rock. His one thing, I, I'm sort of blanking on his name. I, I think it was Tillman who was president at the time of the university. Um, his one requirement was if they if the university took over the medical school, that the first two years of the medical training, medical education would be in Fayetteville. And then the last two years, the last two clinical years would be in Little Rock. So they would do all their sort of pre-work, the, all the anatomy classes, things like that would be up at U of A in Fayetteville. And then the last two years would be in Little Rock. So all parties seem to agree with that. Um, and, um, but the College of Physicians and Surgeons, there was a, a, um, a, um, a little bit of a hiccup because the College of Physicians and Surgeons, the leadership with, um, um, I'm blanking on his name, Runyon, Dr. Runyon, who was Dean of the College of Physicians and Surgeons, they wanted the state to pay them for their investment in the uh, school. So they wanted $15,000 for the buildings and the equipment and so forth. That was the one holdup. And so went back and forth. And finally, the, the state agreed that there would be, they would be paid $15,000, maybe not all at one time. And if they could not raise that money with the, through fees, that the College of Physicians and Surgeons would take, um, um, uh, would take whatever the fees uh, came with or whatever the fees turned out to be. Runyon, Chanel, they all agreed that that would be fine. Uh, and so they did do that. Um, and so the 1910 session uh, of the School of the College of Physicians and Surgeons was the last class that went through the College of Physicians and Surgeons. So in 1911, it was voted for the medical schools to consolidate. Um, and they, the, the state legislators allowed the faculty to uh, choose the new dean of this new combined facility. And so they chose Dr. Lanau, Lanau I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, um, who was on the faculty at U of A Medical School. And then Runyon, who, was, who had been the dean at College of Physicians and Surgeons, uh, uh, was named vice dean of the new combined thing. And that seemed to, um, to uh, satisfy all the parties involved. Um, now, Lanau, uh, he had been with the College of Medicine, the, the medical school, um, since 1907. He was the dean from 1907. Um, he was, uh, he actually was on the faculty, excuse me, he was on the faculty from 1875, uh, on. So he was one of the earlier ones. And interestingly enough, if you go to MacArthur Park, there's a, um, 
there's a monument there about the first uh, dissection in Arkansas done by Lanau. And I'm assuming that's the first legal dissection there. Um, so anyway, Lanau becomes dean of the college. Brunyan becomes vice dean. Meanwhile, right after this, the facilities are sort of all spread out now. So they're still at, uh, they're using the building at 2nd and Sherman Street, the one with the Isaac uh, Folsom Clinic uh, behind it. They have Logan Roots Hospital right next to it. 1912, they move, uh, the school moves into the uh, old state house, which had recently been vacated and moved to um, the state capitol, uh, which has just been completed. So they were using the old state house. They were using the, the old medical school at 2nd and Sherman Streets. And then they were using the uh, facilities at the old College of Physicians and Surgeons. They did not have the hospital, though, at the College of Physicians and Surgeons because after the merger, the hospital was sold off uh, to Dr. Meek, to a Dr. Meek. And he used that uh, for his uh, sort of as an annex first for St. Luke's Hospital, which was downtown. He used the College of Physicians and Surgeons Hospital as an annex. And then, but at this time, you know, 1911, 1912, uh, the medical school, U of A medical school, the now combined medical school, uh, was using all sorts of, I mean, they had facilities all around, along the, along, uh, the river. Um, so, uh, just another picture of the main building showing that that's, uh, that was now part of the U of A. One of the things, another one of the things that was in the agreement was that all the graduates of the College of Physicians and Surgeons would, uh, upon the merger, would become uh, alumni of the University of Arkansas Medical School. And so this is just one of the certifications attesting to Dr. Mitchell about Dr. Mitchell being a, a, a U of A uh, alumni or alumnus. Um, uh, and that was one of the, the uh, uh, concessions that they got. Um, after the merger, of course, the school went through a lot of, the uh, U of A school went through a lot of different changes, went through ups and downs of accreditation and their curriculum. Um, and then they stayed in the old state house until about uh, 1935. And then they moved to the new building, which was over by MacArthur Park, stayed there until 1954. And then they moved to the current location. After the, uh, uh, the merger, the hospital, became Dr. Meek, St. Luke's Annex, and he turned it into University Hospital. Uh, then in 1913, it was sold to Dr. Snodgrass, who turned it into Snodgrass Hospital. That lasted for a couple of years. Uh, after that, it was um, um, then it became a conservatory for uh, college, conservatory and college for women. That lasted for a few years. Um, during World, after a little bit after World War One, uh, a fire struck the main building. It was it was damaged, uh, but it was renovated and it was turned into apartments. And then the building itself came down, I believe, in the nineteen sixties, uh, sometime. So anyway, that is the story of the College of Physicians and Surgeons. It's a little uh, chaotic. It's a little, it's not an easy story to tell, but hopefully uh, it was um, uh, linear enough that you could follow the story. And we do have a comment from Carolyn about the main building was erected on land bought by the Northern Methodist Church and leased by A.S. Maddox. It was sold in 1906 to the College of Physicians and Surgeons. Um, the main building was built in by the Little Rock University, so I don't know about the Northern Methodist Church um, 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 being involved in that, but I haven't looked into the Little Rock University, so I don't know what's involved in that. Um, 
but from all I can gather, the main building was built in 1882 for Little Rock University. Um, and um, so I'm, I'm not sure about the Northern Methodist Church. Okay, so Amanda at the Old State House, the med school used the central and east wings for classes. The wing, the west wing was used for, for patriotic offices. Okay, so the DAR and, and things like that. Okay. Um, and of course, the women's uh, uh, organizations were very instrumental in saving the Old State House to begin with because there, there was a movement to tear it down. And um, uh, the patriotic organizations were very instrumental in saving the old state house. Uh, so that's the end of uh, the presentation. There's my contact information on the screen. Let me close this. And um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them in the in the chat. Um, um, and I apologize if that was a little chaotic. I when I was as I was talking, I felt like it was a little chaotic. But um, I'm hoping I'm uh, I'm in the process. I've uh, been approached by right or right to write this up for the Pulaski County Historical Review that's published by the Pulaski County Historical Society. So hopefully I'll get this written down and um, have it a little bit laid out a little bit and. Um, and uh, it's a very interesting story. And, and uh, you know, I think with the way the U of A medical school was and the shape it was in the early 1900s, um, I think the establishment of College of Physicians and Surgeons is really a jolt that needed to um, uh, needed uh, to sort of jolt the U of A medical school into into making changes and had it not been for the College of Physicians and Surgeons, I don't know if the, if the, when uh, the school, medical school would have been taken over officially by the university. Um, so who knows? That's one of those big ifs. So, um, well, I appreciate everybody tuning in today. Um, uh, if you have any comments, please feel free to send me an email about the time. Um, as I mentioned earlier at the very beginning, um, we're hoping that this is a more convenient time for people. Um, this has been this has been recorded as is all of our presentations, and um, they are once they're edited, they're put up on the society's YouTube channel. Um, so if you want to relook at it, you're more than welcome to do that, and you can share those with your friends and colleagues as well. So um, if there aren't any more questions, I'll sign off. I'll sign, I'll stay on for a little bit, a few minutes longer, just in case there are any questions. Um, yeah, Carolyn, the 40,000, uh, um, it, it's interesting. I'll have to do a little bit more in-depth, a uh, little bit more research into the beginnings of the, of uh, Maddox. And I haven't done any research itself on the, on the Maddox seminary. Um, so, or the, nor the, Little Rock University. So I need to do a little bit more of that uh, before I finalize and write it down. But um, but thank you for that information. So Nancy, the cadaver in the tank uh, is your favorite story. Is, is that the one? Is that from the College of Physicians and Surgeons? I'm not familiar with that story. I will say that um, uh, there was a notation uh, in um, in uh, Dr. Baird's book about the history of medical education when he talks about the College of Physicians and Surgeons. He did say that the U of A Medical School had uh, their students were a little bit more sophisticated than the students at the College of Physicians and Surgeons, and that they had to the the faculty at the College of Physicians and Surgeons had to padlock the, the barn door uh, to keep uh, the students, the, the male students, and of course that's all that who were there at that time, um, from using the bathroom in the barn. Um, so um, I found that kind of an interesting story as well. And 
Um, that's okay. The, the cadavers in the old state house. Yes, I have heard. There's some, there's some good stories about when the medical school was at uh, the, uh, the old state house. Thank you, Carolyn. I appreciate the references sending me whatever you have. So, well, thank you all very much. Again, uh, feel free to email me. It's uh, tgnut at uams.edu if you have any questions or comments, or if you have any suggestions for future programming or you'd like to do a program. Um, so hope to see you next month on February 1st, and y'all have a nice day and, a, and a, a nice end of the week and have a nice weekend. Thank you all. Okay.